My greeting to you all today I want to talk about holy magic, number one, Catholicism is a cultism and all priests are the initiates, actually while I was in Indian magic and wrestling I met a priest who initiated me into another form of magic called holy magic, in fact holy magic is nothing else than Catholic magic. The priest was Spanish, he was of the congregation of the Catholic fathers. He also initiated me into white magic. Catholicism is not a religion of Jesus Christ, it's just Satanism hiding behind a Christian mask. During my practice of Roman Catholic magic I was given a manual of black magic, a grimoire is a book of magic spells, I had a black magic manual of Saint Peter and Saint John the Baptist, I also had the manual of Solomonic magic, I had the satanic pentagram of Pope Pius XII. And when you read these books of magic prayer toward the end it is written that every Roman Catholic priest is a magician. I tell you the truth, every priest is a magician and initiated in holy magic, Catholicism is a cultism and Catholic priests are all initiated in the practice of magic, and we will unveil a cultism that is at the core of this religion, Catholicism has two main offices, firstly in the physical world, its headquarter is in the Vatican, a state in a state. You have the Vatican State in the state of Italy. It has a bicolor flag, yellow and white. These two colors mean prayers and sacrifices, and secondly in the invisible world of Lucifer, the headquarter or the main office of the Catholic Church is in the kingdom of Lucifer precisely in the world Armstrong, this territory is also called the Marian Domain, this is the main office of the Catholic religion in the kingdom of Lucifer. This department of the kingdom of the devil is ruled by a siren called Mary Marguella, she is the queen of heaven that is worshipped as the holy virgin Mary the mother of Christ, I was travelling to the world Armstrong in the realm of the devil and I was also travelling to St. Peter's Basilica in chamber number 6, also in chamber number 8 and chamber 11, actually there are 11,000 chambers in Vatican St. Peter Basilica, each of these chambers is allocated to a specific branch of occultism, I was usually attending chamber 11 allocated to red magic because I was a practitioner, I told you I was initiated in occultism by a catholic priest, one day the priest took me to his private library, they were a lot of mysterious magic book of occultism, I took a book that is called Ave Lucifer, this book is about the biography of Lucifer, after reading the book the priest invoked Lucifer because I had a question to ask him, when Lucifer showed up he made it known to me that the whole world belonged to him, it is written that the whole world lies under the power of the evil one, Lucifer said to me, Elvis I have to take you to the first heaven and the second heaven to visit my representative, but this earth belonged to me as well, and I have placed my representative on this earth, I interrupted Lucifer and I asked him who is your representative on earth. He replied to me, everybody knows him and everybody respect him. He is in the Vatican and no one can do anything on planet earth without the approval of my representative, I understood that the Pope was the representative of the devil on planet earth, the devil has five ministry on this earth, this is an imitation of the fivefold ministry of Jesus Christ, he has established the Pope, he has established the Cardinal, he has also established my Lord, my Father and the Reverend. Then the devil took me to the first heaven when he introduced me to the queen of the south ruling the first heaven, afterward the devil took me to the second heaven and he introduced me to the queen of heaven, her name is Mary Marguella, this space siren is responsible for false religion on earth, she is worship in the catholic church as the mother of Jesus Christ and she has many names such as Our Lady, Fatima, Rose, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Mother of God. Number 2 The Process of Canonization, let talk about canonization how a priest is canonized and how he is declared holy and who declared him holy, I was traveling to Vatican with Catholic priest in relation to Roman Catholic magic, when a Catholic priest died they were generally buried in a local cemetery of the city built specially for them, two days after the burial of the priest, we were heading to the cemetery in the night through astral traveling and we were unearthing his corpse mystically with the help of the demon in charge of the cemetery that is called Red Dragon the Emperor of the Cemetery, afterwards we were placing the corpse of the late priest on the flying carpet that is used by most of Roman Catholic priests, I said all Catholic priests are the initiates, 
and then we were traveling mystically to the Vatican St. Peter Basilica to a specific chamber, I said there are 11,000 chambers in Vatican St. Peter Basilica, the corpse of the priest was then handed over to a group of satanic Roman Catholic priest, these priests were supposed to remove bone from the corpse of the late priest and embalm the body, afterwards they were supposed to send the corpse of the late priest to Pope Paul VI in the world Armstrong which is the Catholic department in the kingdom of the devil, actually Pope Paul VI died in the 70 but his soul is working in the spirit realm for the devil, once the bone of the late priest arrived in the kingdom of the devil in the world Armstrong, Lucifer himself will cut the bone in two parts. The first part of the bone is grand and turned to dust, afterward the devil would write the name of the late priest on the solid bone, in fact he will add or write the title saint before the name of the late priest on that bone, the devil himself will declare the priest holy, as a result he become canonized, then the devil will send the two bones back the earth to the pope in the Vatican. When the Pope receive the two bones from the devil the Vatican will allocate money for a new parish that will be built in a specific region of the earth, and the solid bone of the late priest will be buried on the foundation of the new parish that is to be built, and this new parish will be named after that late priest, like I said the new parish will be named after the late priest whose bone is buried on the foundation of the parish, if the late priest was named Nicholas the new parish will be called Saint Nicholas because the devil added the title saint on his bone, on the other hand the bone that was turned to dust will be placed in a utensil and a priest altar, no priest will celebrate the mass in that parish before invoking the late priest whose bones is placed on the foundation of the parish precisely where the bone were buried, this invocation of the dead priest is called the litany of the saint, this litany of the saint is also done during the mass on the bone that is turned to dust and placed on the altar, Number 3, The Litany of the Saint, The Invocation of the Deads and the Ancestors, Let's talk about the invocation of the deads and the ancestors in the Roman Catholic Church, you remember in my testimony I talk about the visit in the cemetery, I explained how my master the Roman Catholic priest took me in the night of the cemetery, and by means of magic prayer and incantation he managed to open my spiritual eyes. As a result I became able to see the realm of the deads in the cemetery, in fact I saw an urban metropolitan city in the cemetery, an advanced kingdom well populated. The priest said to me that the kingdom that I saw in the cemetery was the world of the deads, and the people that I saw in the urban city were souls who died before the time appointed for them by God. While we were leaving the cemetery the priest said to me, Elvis. Do you know that during all Catholic Mass we invoke the deads and they joined us in the Mass? He said the deads and the ancestors join us as a result of invocation but people don't see them, the problem is that people don't have eyes to see, I said to the Roman Catholic priest I have been working for you as acolyte but I never saw the deads in the Mass. The priest said to me, Elvis. If you saw the kingdom of the deads in the cemetery it's because I have opened your spiritual eyes through incantation and in order to see the deads during the mass like all the priests you must have spiritual eyes, you must be initiated like Roman Catholic priest, then the priest said, in the mass people call the deads to join them but people are not careful with words of invocation that they recite, people don't pay attention to words that come out of their mouth they think it's just words, yet the deads join them in the mass in response to invocation prayer. To refresh my memory the priest began to recite a prayer that we recite during the Mass that is called Congolese Rite, it arrived from Roman Rite, and this prayer was approved by the Vatican for the invocations of the deads. The pray goes like this, the saints of heaven we invoke you, come you that will see God, come listen to our invocation and be among all those who are celebrating the Mass today, and you are ancestors who served God in good heart listen to our invocation and come down here among those who are celebrating the mass, after reciting this prayer the priest asked me, Elvis do you remember this prayer right? We do it during the mass as a result the deads and the ancestors join us in the mass but people don't see them, only the priests that are the initiate that can see them, and before the mass the priest must invoke the spirit of the canonized priest whose bones are buried on the foundation of the parish, this is called the litany of the saint. Number 4 The Eucharist, 
During the Eucharist ceremony the priest will lift up the Eucharist not to Jesus Christ but to the space siren the Queen of Heaven called Mary Marguella, then the acolyte will ring the bell to signal the arrival of space sirens or the planetary demons who came to attend the ceremony of the Eucharist. The priest will bend his head to welcome the space siren then he will start distributing the Eucharist, afterwards the priest will bend his head to salute the departure of space siren. Then the priest will get the people inside the Queen of Heaven pentacle that you see here, take note that there is three letter in the Eucharist which are the letter H, the letter I and the letter S, these letters are the initial of ancient God that were predominant in ancient Egypt, these are planetary divinities, the letter I is the initial of the demon Isis, the letter H is the initial of the demon Horus and the letter S is the initial of the demon Seth, these are space demons or planetary demons. What happen is that the acolytes will sound the bell to signal the arrival of these space sirens and the demon bombard, afterward the priest will kiss the dusty bone of the late canonized priest that is placed on the altar, this is called the relic of Saint Peter, and note that during the Eucharist the priest invoke the demon bombard, it is written in Jeremiah 7 verse 18 that the children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women need dough to make cakes for the Queen of Heaven and they pour out drink offerings to other gods in order to spite me. Dear believers the cake for the Queen of Heaven mentioned in the scripture is the Eucharist, I always call it the biscuit of death. Number 5 The holy blessed water, this water is neither holy nor blessed, but where does it come from? The origin of holy water is the kingdom of the cemetery, I told you that there is a world in the cemetery, in that kingdom they recover human body of people who have recently died and they leave it like that for four days, after four days the body will begin to swell and it begin to decompose and in the decomposition process the body will begin to secrete liquid, we were recovering that liquid and we were giving it to false prophets as holy water, there are people among us who have already drunk water from these false prophets, especially women, because they are the ones who like prophecies, beloved. The ultimate prophecy is the word of God, many people believe that they can be freed only when one makes them drink holy water or anointing oil, we read in the scripture the furthers kindle the fire, and the women need dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven, and they pour out drink offerings to other gods in order to spite me. The ritual of pouring out drink offering and libation is similar to the practice of pouring holy water, number 6, the burning of incense to the queen of heaven. Dear believer since biblical times the Queen of Heaven Mary Marguella was worshipped even by the children of Israel. The Jew have practiced the burning of incense to the Holy Virgin Mary the so-called Mother of Jesus, let me remind you that the smoke of incense attract demons and demonic spirit loved it, and the Roman Catholic Church is in the practice of burning incense in honor of the Queen of Heaven, it is written in Jeremiah 44 verse 17. We will certainly do everything we said we would, we will burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and we will pour our drink offerings to her just as we and our ancestors, our kings and our officials did in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. At that time we had plenty of food and were well off and suffered. Number 7 The Conjuring of the Four Kings and the Cross Sign When you read the Psalm 75 verse 7 the Bible says, For exaltation comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south but God is the judge. This means that exaltation comes only from the Lord. It is a revelation of God, why? Because in the east, Lucifer has already placed a demon called Beman, in the west, there is a demon called Amemon, so when you take the four cardinal points, the north is the septentrion, the south is the midi, the east is the orient and the west is the occident. In the four corners of the world, Lucifer has placed four demons whose mission is to strengthen the power of evil in the world. And these four demons enter in the life of a person by two means, the first is the sign of the cross. It's a trap of Satan. There are many people who have already made this sign. People in their ignorance do not understand where the trap is. They believe that they are doing, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And because they are doing this quickly, they don't realize the trickery. But when you do it slowly, you see the trap of the devil. That's when you understand that in reality, you are doing the Father, the Son, the Holy and the Spirit separately, 
you are actually invoking the four demons dispatched by the devil in the four corner of the earth, there are Mogua, in the north, Ejim the great, in the south there is Beman, in the west Memon in the east, this sign of the cross is called in Roman Catholic magic the conjuring of the four kings and all the priests know that because they are the initiates, the second method through which these demons enter and people is through the ash, which is put on the forehead of people on Ash Wednesday, what happens? The acolytes come with the ash that comes from branches of the same season that has been burned. It is mixed with olive oil. And you will see the priest do that sign when he comes. When he does that, on the left side of the sacristy, there is a white stone called Petra's. From there, there are demons which enter with another special ash. It is an ash that is taken in the world of cemeteries after having burned human bones, they take the ash that the acolytes brought and leave the ash that comes from the calcinations of human bones from the world of cemeteries. And then the priest stands in front, and people line up, he starts making this sign of cross on their faces while saying, you are dust, and to the dust you shall return. That's what you hear, but in reality, this is not what is said by the priest. He says, you are dead in our magic and you become a slave of death, when you look carefully, the cross that they put on the face, is a cross with four corners. However at these corners the Ramogua, Ejim the great beeman, Amemon. These spirits enter in the person. We know that man has three part, there is the body which is the envelope, the spirit that makes the body move and the soul which is the center of the will and decision. And there, the soul is captured and brought in the presidium which is the prison of Mary Marguella the Queen of Heaven. That is the reason why, even if you tell the truth to a faithful Catholic, he will listen to you, but at the end, he will tell you, Mary and I, only death will separate us. Do they easily accept to abandon Mary? It is because they are not masters of their will, they are bewitched. That is why we must pray for them, just remember that the souls and the will of Catholic faithful are in the presidium the prison of the Queen of Heaven in the second heaven, number eight Rikium Mass or the Mass of the Deads. Panchard is the demon who rule on the day of Friday and he is the demon who coordinates the spirits of dead people, that is why in the Catholic sect, there is a requiem mass or mass of the deads on Friday, here I want to digress a bit, in the requiem mass if a believer of this satanic sect is dead, you will see, people will carry the coffin, and put it in front of the door. They will close all the doors, and you will see these so called priests come there with an acolyte. The acolyte will hold a vase where there is some water called holy water. In this vase there is something called sprinkler. The priest will take it and begin to sprinkle the coffin with strength. And it is only after that, that one will open the door, and people will go in, even the coffin, and the mass will begin. At one moment, you will hear the priest say, it is great the mystery of faith. Sometimes, one sings it. The priest will then take the censer, will start to walk around the coffin, and you will notice that the coffin will be surrounded by smoke. When he says, it is great the mystery of faith, from that moment, there is a white stone which is on the left side of the sacristy, that stone opens itself and there are four legions of demons who enter. When they enter, they walk on the heads of people who attend that mass. Then they will enter the smoke that surrounds the coffin. And then you will notice a smell of incense. When you inhale this smell, the demons enter in you. And here, I appeal to the God who delivered me as a witness. If what I am telling you is not the truth, let my God strike me even now. What I am telling you is the truth and all priests know it. Little piece of advice. Never enter this satanic church. If, for example, someone dies in your neighborhood, if the person is a member of this satanic sect, if you choose to go to his funeral, as soon as they arrive in front of their temple, stay outside until they finish their nonsense, number nine the two stones, there are two stones, it is what is called the concept of purgatory. Those two stones were cut in Jerusalem, where there was the sepulcher of Jesus, at the entrance there was a stone, and inside, there was another stone where the body of the Lord was laid. Those people went to Jerusalem, from the stone that is at the entrance they cut a part and from the stone that is inside, they cut a second part. 
The part cut from the entrance stone is called Petros, and the one cut from the inside stone is called Petros. They took the two stones and brought them to the world Armstrong. And when they arrived there, through mystical ceremonies, they enlarged those stones. Wherever they want to build a temple which will house this religion, they must go in the world Armstrong to cut pieces from those two stones. The first stone, Petros, is the one that one puts at the foundation's pipe, on the left side of the sacristy while one builds the temple. With these two stones, when a Satanist wants to go to the world of darkness, he reads an incantation which is in the book called Missal, it is a prayer book. They read words that I cannot mention here. And after that, when they go to a place where there is a parish that houses this religion, they can only turn three times, and automatically, the stone of the sacristy will be visible, they do it at night, and as soon as they touch it, they enter through it and go to the world of Satan. The second stone is the one called the altar stone. One puts that stone there. One gives these lessons even to young people who are in the ministry of acolyte in the liturgy. And in the liturgy, they are told that this place is called altar of cavity or altar of tomb. Look for yourself, a tomb in the church of God. Beloved, there are things that are really clear. How can one find a tomb in a church? And so when one gets there, near that stone, there are relic that are in fact bones of the canonized priest. If the church bears the name of a saint, one will put the relics of that saint on the altar, and when the priest arrives, when he kisses the altar, he automatically becomes half man, half animal, his tongue becomes the tongue of the serpent. And he begins to read the mass, which creates contact with the world of darkness, the acolytes use a small bell in the Catholic Church during the transubstantiation. It is the moment they turn bread into the body of Christ and wine into the blood of Christ. This small bell that the acolytes use when they are on their knees, is satanic. They use it to open the door to demons, there is a white stone which is at the right side of the sacristy, it is through that stone way that demons enter the Catholic Church during the Mass, but what is the difference between what the priest does and what a magician does at the cemetery? Both use the two candles that represent the two pillars of the Kabbalistic tree of life. The candle on the right is called the pillar of mercy, the candle on the left is called the pillar of rigor. And it allows the coming down of solar divinities in the mass. And now, when one takes the censer, pours the incense in the mass, smoke rises and it is supposed to reach the ninth emanation of Lucifer in order to bring down the influence of Lucifer in the church and the mass, be very careful, all that I am telling you is the truth, dot.